welcome, welcome, subscribe, join the family, show support, and I would really appreciate it if you are a returning subscriber. Welcome back, my darlings. Welcome to another video. Um, so today, ooh, the sun. All right, today we're gonna talk about how to budget as a parent. Yes, you are a parent. We we understand that you have the extra responsibilities because you have a child or you have children that you have to take care of. You have more bills to pay than someone who's not a parent. But I just want to tell you that regardless on how heavy your burden can be, it's still positive, possible for you to pay your bills and cover your expenses and you still have some savings as well as make some investments for future. Um, we really don't know what the future holds. We really don't know what's going to happen to us tomorrow after tomorrow. So now or today that we are alive, we should be very cautious about it and make some smart decisions. All right. So, yeah, first thing first, yes, your expenses need to be covered. Let's say you earn 10,000, 10,000 rent, 10,000 euros, 10,000 dollars, 10,000 pounds, 10,000 all of that so and you have expenses to cover so if you're still paying for mortgage for your bond then we will say you have the bond the mortgage or the mortgage or you have or you have the rent to pay you have electricity water you have assurance companies to pay you have your medical aids to pay you have medical bills to pay perhaps you have um uh, Wi-Fi to pay for the the fiber the, the the lights you know all those kind of expenses so in your ten thousand we taking already five thousand we are going to assign that for all your primary needs or expenses which will also include the children's school fees or the child school fees yes if the child is on scholarship that's really much better you get the extra help but let's just say the child is not a scholarship you have to pay whether it is a public hospital sorry public school or private school you still have to pay something all right and private school is even more more because it's private yeah yeah they're running businesses yeah so it's more expensive so you cover all those expenses with the five thousand and we will have five thousand remaining so as a parent if you have a child, it's, it's, it's fine. If you have children, it's also fine. But you're gonna have to know if you have a child, that child has to have a bank account. So has to have some sort of fund. You are saving in a separate account for your child. If you have children, you have to have different accounts. Each and every child has to have their own account. I'm Nicole. If I'm your child, as Nicole, I have to have my own bank account called Nicole, for Nicole yes and if i have a brother named cedric cedric also has to have his own bank account if i had another a, a brother named sammy sammy also have to have his own account so as a parent you need to have three accounts one account for a child so the other thing is faithfully you need to drop a, a specific amount of money into that account Let's say you say 100 US dollar every single month into has to be deposit or EFT into each and every child's account. You have to do that faithfully, religiously. You can't say, oh, this month I want to buy a designer shoe. I want to change my car. I want to update my house. I want to take a trip to Cancun or to Bali or wherever. I can't drop the money. That's, that's, that's not being responsible when you take a commitment you should carry on with throughout every single month once you uh, whether you want to take a trip whether you want to go on a vacation whether you want to upgrade your car your iphone your 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 your, your macbook or your your house whatever you want to do or you want to pay for your child's wedding you want that's not that those accounts business it's not their business that business is to receive a deposit from you each and every single month because that's what they're there for to receive the deposit from you you're putting those monies into your child or children's account so that's when they grow up they may have funds 
to pay for their college education. If you study with a student loan, it doesn't mean they should be studying a student loan, no. We are working hard as human beings so that our children, when we have them or if we really have them, can have a better life. If you struggle to pay for university or college or whatever, you don't want your kid to go through that. If you even couldn't afford college because you didn't have money or you couldn't get a student loan or you had no one to support you, you don't want your child or children to go through that because you know how much it hurt. You know the pain behind that. And obviously as a parent full of love and mercy and compassion, you are certainly not willing to let your child go through all the struggle that you went through. You see, our parent loves us more than we even think. They go out of their ways. They starve themselves. They sacrifice a lot to give us, as a, you know, children a better life. So you as well, in your turn as, as a parent, you're going to have to do the same, my darling. Yes, you need to do the same. There's no other way. Then your parenting shouldn't, I don't know, wouldn't be you know done in the right way if you lay your child or children struggle the same way as you did so the other reason that you be opening those accounts you know those funds and growing them for your child or children is that so that should anything happen to you today because you can die today you can have a heart attack you can have a car accident you pass you can fall in your bathroom you can't walk anymore you have to sit on the wheelchair because your spinal cord your kind of um your spinal cord, for instance, your back or whatever is broken. You can't, you sit on a wheelchair, you cannot walk anymore. Tell me, your kids who are small, who are still in high school, primary school, what will they do? A life of debt, you know, taking a student loan, taking a home loan, loan on the left, loan on the right, debt up, debt down. It's not a life that sh everyone should be living. If you can, you should try budgeting so you can stay away from debt. And if you can, as a parent, you should consider saving and investment so your children can stay away from life of debt and loans. It's not good to owe the bank all the time. You owe the bank for the house. You owe the bank for the car. You owe the bank for your cell phone. You owe the bank for your laptop. You owe the bank for your studies. You owe the... <laughs> the only thing you are not owing the bank for is probably your children. They're the only people in your life that are debt that are not you know uh debt involved they're like free of any loan and debt and that's not good my darling whether you are a gentleman or a lady watching me ladies and gentlemen this is not good so if you can please please stay away from debt i'm calling debt as trouble stay away from trouble bankers they know that they allow us to go take those loans those credit cards because they know they are making money out of us that's why they're getting you richer every single day because we are forever taking loans, home loans, slidey loans. One day we're going to take even <laughs> life loan. It's so much a shame. So you cover your expenses. You um, consider savings. If you earn 10000 5000 goes to your expenses, including the child or children's school fees or child support. And if you are paying child support, the other five thousand you have to consider two thousand rand for your savings, three thousand rand for investment, the five thousand that that left. If you have a child, please deduct two hundred rand, two hundred US, two hundred euros, two hundred pounds. Drop into the account every single month to the fund or trust fund. Uh, the the remaining four point eight thousand rand or four point eight um thousand dollars uh, or euros or pounds you can use it to cover up your needs the needs of those who depend on you or other, uh, any other needs that you may have or bills that you may have or projects that you may want to fund or plans that you may want to fulfill so but it is possible as a parent to have a stable financial situation it is possible to live a life free of debt or loans and stuff like that it is possible to create funds you know for your children or your child while you're still alive should anything happen to you today your children will not go begging borrowing but they will be able to maintain the lifestyle they'll be able to keep living they'll be able to study they will be able to start a business once they complete their studies or once they are ready and they will have a nice life no one will say oh look at them today the father is dead the mom is there look at their lives 
what a shame nobody will say that because when you're alive you make sure that your children or your child is financially secure and if the child is immature is a party like a person or party type of people you may want to put some guardian on top of their finance and put some age restriction as to when they can get access to the fund because the money you have worked so hard for you have sweated so much for you really don't want them to waste it so this is the end of the CE video ladies and gentlemen my darling i'm gonna stop here as much as i love you if you haven't yet check my other videos out to budget as a student as a young professional as a single parent and as well as let's talk finance um yeah so if you haven't yet please subscribe show support i will appreciate that should you have any question feel free to drop the com the comments or the question is in the comment section down below as of me i love you so much and i will see you on my next video thank you my love bye my love